Okay. The prelude. Oh, I can't get your violin if I don't take okay. you. If you move over. Go back. Are you unmuted? Mm -hmm. And keeping with our theme about uh, our prayers for children and our awareness there, um, I'll be playing uh, two songs, one from the Faith We Sing book, 2233, Where Children Belong, and then out of uh, the J. Unger uh, book called uh, Prairie Spring. You'll recognize it, I think, when you hear it. Thank you, Alice. Hear now these centering words. Christ is the light and imprint of God's glory. Let all God's children come to the light. Please join me in our call to worship. Walk humbly before the Lord, even in hardship and pain. We will live with integrity before God all the days of our lives. Walk faithfully before our God, even when put to the test. We will honor the Lord our God all the days of our lives. Come, let us worship. Our opening hymn is from The Faith We Sing, number 2243, We All Are One in Mission. A little introduction.
please join with me in reciting our opening prayer. Almighty God, you spoke to our ancestors long ago through your prophets and teachers. But today you speak to us through your son in the midst of life's trials and tribulations. Help us keep our integrity and walk faithfully in your ways. Help us listen to the words of your son and become like children again, that we may rejoice in your kingdom and trust in your spirit. Amen. The first scripture reading is from Psalm 26. Vindicate me, O Lord, for I have walked in my integrity, and I have trusted in the Lord without wavering. Prove me, O Lord, and try me. Test my heart and mind, for your steadfast love is before my eyes, and I walk in faithfulness to you. I do not sit with the worthless, nor do I consort with hypocrites. I hate the company of evildoers and will not sit with the wicked. I wash my hands in innocence and go around your altar, O Lord, singing aloud a song of thanksgiving and telling all your wondrous deeds. O Lord, I love the house in which you dwell and the place where your glory abides. Do not sweep me away with sinners, nor my life with the bloodthirsty. Those in whose hands are evil devices and whose right hands are full of bribes. But as for me, I walk in my integrity. Redeem me and be gracious to me. My foot stands on level ground. In the great congregation, I will bless the Lord. And our second reading is from the Gospel of Mark 10, chapter 10, verses 2 through 9. Some Pharisees came, and to test him they asked, Is it lawful for a man to divorce his wife? He answered them, What did Moses command of you? They said, Moses allowed a man to write a certificate of dismissal and to divorce her. But Jesus said to them, Because of your hardness of the heart, he wrote this commandment for you. But from the beginning of creation, God made them male and female. For this reason, a man shall leave his father and mother and be joined to his wife, and the two shall become one flesh. So they are no longer two, but one flesh. Therefore, what God has joined together, let no one separate. This is the word from God for God's people. Thanks be to God. Let us join together in prayer. Loving God, we come to you this day in the beauty of the sun's sunshine, in the coolness of the air, thanking you for calmness in our souls, hope in our hearts. It is a good day to be alive. And as things are right with the world, we can echo that tradition, nati traditional native saying, and it is a good day to die because everything is set in place. However, Lord, we are looking forward to greater living, doing more things on your behalf, being participants in this world as we share your truth, as we share your love, as we share with compassion. We lift up to you those who are on the road traveling from one place to another that you will keep them safe. We lift up to you those who are in need of healing. 
We lift up those who need physical, mental, emotional, spiritual health. Help us to be the conduit of your grace and healing to the people we meet. For those who are at a point of transition to another life, we pray that it will be smooth. We pray that you will welcome them with open arms. Continue to be with our country, those places that are struggling with the disease, the, the virus that is still rampant, those who are still struggling with fires or the aftermath of fires those areas that are cleaning up after storms and floods, hurricanes and tornadoes. And we pray for our government that they will choose the people over their own party's processes and, and need to hold on to power. Help them see that they were elected to do what is right for the greater good, for the people, however that comes out. We pray for our world that is in constant turmoil, that it will know your peace, that it will know joy and love. And we pray all of this in Jesus' name. Amen. As was mentioned earlier, we are supporting the backpack program that is run out of the Presbyterian Church. It can be part of your financial givings to this church. If you designate it as going to the backpack program, it will be processed. Offering our gifts, not only our gifts of money, but our gifts of prayer, our gifts of presence, our gifts of witness, is a holy act. In this sacred moment, let us offer our gifts and our lives to the holy work of God. Please join with me in our offertory response. This is from 587 in the hymnal. Bless thou the gifts our hands have brought. Bless thou Amen. And join with me in our offering prayer. God of love, just as you speak to us through a son, speak to your world through our gifts. May our offering receive your blessing and go forth to bring life and love to a world in need of both. Amen. Hear this, uh, these words from Hebrews 1, 1 through 4, and chapter 2, 10 through 12. Long ago, God spoke to our ancestors in many and various ways by the prophets. But in these last days, he has spoken to us by a son, whom he appointed heir of all things, through whom he also created the worlds. He is the reflection of God's glory and the exact imprint of God's very being. And he sustains all things by his powerful world, word. When he had made purification for sins, he sat down at the right hand of the majesty on high, having become as much superior to angels as the name he has inherited is more excellent than theirs. It was fitting that God, for whom and through whom all things exist, in bringing many children to glory, 
should make the pioneer of their salvation perfect through sufferings. For the one who sanctifies and those who are sanctified all have one Father. For this reason, Jesus is not ashamed to call them brothers and sisters, saying, I will proclaim your name to my brothers and sisters in the midst of the congregation. I will praise you. In this passage from Hebrews, we get an image of relationship. The communion between Jesus and the Creator God. These words tell about children being brought into glory and Jesus calling all brothers and sisters. These are words of communion. Not necessarily the words that we say during the communion liturgy, but going with the deeper meaning of communion. What does it mean to be in communion? Today is World Communion Sunday. It's a day that recognizes the many Christians around the world who will or have already celebrated the gift of relationship found through Jesus Christ. In this action, in this ritual of taking the elements of bread and juice, we are connected to the greater world, past, present, and future. We are eternally in communion. The word communion means to be in fellowship, and it comes from the word common. It signifies that we have things in common with one another. We believe in God. We believe in the sacrifice of God becoming human to give us a deeper fellowship with God and with each other. It's a powerful thought, being in fellowship with the Creator and with creation. Now think about this. If we're in communion with each other, does it mean we have to be in total agreement with each other? That would be hard. There are always places of disagreement, and we need to realize that it's okay to disagree, especially if we can do so without being disagreeable. We don't have to like the same books, the same movies, or even the same ice cream. Those differences are what give variety and interest to the world. What we must be careful of is not allowing those differences to become divisions, which we heard about from James. Not to let them take us away from being in communion. We are in a time of great division in our country and even in our greater church. We must be careful to not let any of that cause or create division within these two churches. If we're in fellowship and have things in common, we will respect another person's decision to believe differently. That's one of the great things about being human. We're not all the same. Hallelujah for that. We have diversity, and it makes for interesting conversations and a beautiful, lively, and colorful world. I want to touch briefly on the passage from Mark that we heard earlier. The Pharisees were questioning Jesus about divorce. In the scripture reading from Mark, the Pharisees were asked, excuse me, I repeated myself there. Moses had already given a law stating that it wasn't right for a man to divorce his wife. Jesus stated this again and added that Moses did this because the men were being hard-hearted. They weren't caring about the humanity of the women. Women were considered property, and the man had the legal right to do whatever they wanted to do with their wives. A divorced woman, if she was unable to be taken in by a male relative, had nowhere to go. So she was left to fend for herself in a manner unbefitting any human being. 
she would sell her body to have enough money to live. Moses and now Jesus both said this was wrong. Women should not be put in this position. This was breaking fellowship. This was abuse. This was not communion. Back in 2018, Bob, my oldest sister, Orinda, and I were in Minneapolis for a rural advocates meeting, back when we could actually meet in person. While I was in meetings, Bob took the time to walk around the city, finding landmarks and learning about the community of people who navigate those streets on a daily basis. While he was out, being a West Coast man, he tried an experiment to see how many people would look him in the eye as he walked past. The results were disappointing, but not unexpected. After I came back from this meeting, I was with a group of pastors in St. Helens, and I was sharing with them about this, and all of them had served in the Midwest. And so they shared with me that if you want to know who the extrovert is in a circle of people standing around, it's the person who's looking at someone else's shoes. That's the extrovert. We live in a world of broken communion. And that part of the country especially is hesitant to engage with strangers. One day while in the hotel, my sister and I stepped into an elevator. The only other person in there was a younger black man. I said hello to him and asked him how he was. He wouldn't look at me but made some comment a muttered kind of comment in return. After my sister got off the elevator, I was in there with this man alone. I was in my typical West Coast headspace of all is well. But when we stopped at his floor, he got off the elevator as quickly as he could. <clears throat> at first, I really didn't think anything about it. But then I realized that he, not I, might have felt compromised. That being a black man alone in that elevator with a white woman put him at risk. This is the environment that we have created. Broken fellowship, mistrust, and the idea that we can't look at each other for fear of aggression. That we can't share the same space for fear of accusations. These are the things being perpetuated in our society. Brokenness, failure to be present for one another. We are not in communion. For the things we believe we have in common have been taken away. Today, on World Communion Sunday, when we should be celebrating our appreciation for those things we have in common as human beings, I'm feeling very much like we're losing ground, that we are moving away from that precious communion we have, the commonalities that are ours because we are children of God. My sisters and brothers, we are the people of God. We have the gifts to bring healing and words to remind people that we have so much more in common than we have differences. Help others find the places of communion. May we see that the breath of God is still blowing over the waters of creation and bringing forth new life. If we truly want to share in common, share a common voice that will bring about change, then we must continue to see beauty in diversity and fellowship in our places of commonality. Let us seek to be in communion with the greater world, finding those places where we share the fellowship of the one who loves unconditionally. Amen.
Hear this invitation to the table. Christ invites to his table all people of the earth. No one is turned away. You are welcome, and we pray that your connection with God through Jesus will be enhanced and made stronger through the bread, cup, and words of liturgy. Let no barriers keep you away from this sacred time. Please join with me in our words of confession. Source of unity and strength, in our longing for wholeness, we reach out to your Son, who touch, whose touch heals our brokenness. In our yearning for community, we take hold of the promise of Christ, whose life and love bind us together as one. From lives of separation and distrust, knit us into one family, where all are welcomed and honored. As we share the bread of life and drink the cup of salvation, forge us anew as one people of faith. Amen. Brothers and sisters, know that you have been made new. We are one people of faith. Amen. As you have gathered your elements together, hear these words of liturgy. It is truly just to give you thanks, divine creator of new ways. You form this diverse creation with your creativity and joy and called it good. You also created us with tender, loving care so that we could be your image in the world. But we strayed from the way, O oh God, and we began to forget what your image in us looked like, and we turned our eyes from you. Thanks be to you, O oh holy God, that you do not give up on your creation. You forge a new pathway where there are no pathways. You lifted up your servants, both men and women, and forge them, forge a new people filled with hope and purpose. And so with all your angels and archangels, we praise you with this unending hymn. Holy, holy, holy Lord God Almighty, heaven and earth praise you the same. Blessed is the one who comes in God's name. Hosanna in the highest. Holy are you, and holy is the one who came to make straight the paths and to prepare highways of love and peace. Jesus, the day laborer of justice. Jesus, the strong arm of liberation. Jesus, the sojourner who walked with the despised and marginalized, with the laughable and the ones who were not counted. That same Jesus walks with us today, shoulder to shoulder, hand in hand, forging the reign of God where equity is created and diversity celebrated in one holy body. For his inclusive message, this Jesus was betrayed, tortured, and given over to be put to death. On the night of his betrayal, Jesus met with his disciples men and women to celebrate the Passover feast. He took the bread, blessed and broke it, and shared it with his disciples saying, this is my body broken for you and for the world. Then he also took the cup and said, this is the cup of a new covenant made in my blood. And now, O oh God, accept this sacrifice which we offer to you through the great mercy that you have shown in Jesus Christ for us in union with all your saints that have forged new pathways of justice and peace in your name. Christ has died, Christ is risen, Christ will come again. Pour out your Holy Spirit all over all those wherever they may be, and over this bread and cup, 
Make them be for us the body and blood of Christ so that we can be the same body for the world. Make us one united body, one committed body, one body forging new pathways of peace and justice. Through Jesus Christ, all glory and honor is yours forever. Amen. I invite you to join me in the Lord's Prayer. This one I will be singing. You may say these words or whatever words are comfortable for you. Our God in heaven, holy is your name, your reign come, your will done on earth as in heaven. Give us today our daily bread and help us forgive as we have been forgiven. In the time of trial, lead us into light. For yours is the kingdom and the power and the glory. Our God in heaven, holy is your name, holy is your name. My sisters and brothers, I invite you to partake of the bread and of the cup showing the willingness of God to become one of us, to sacrifice all that God was and is, to bring us into communion with one another. The body and blood of Christ. Amen. Let us pray. Holy God, as we have partaken of these gifts that remind us of, that all, of all that you through Jesus have done for us, may we become participants in your communion with us and with the greater world. May we be a voice of community and fellowship in this place. Amen. Our closing hymn is number 428, For the Healing of the Nations. I'll play a short introduction.
My sisters and brothers, as you go forth this day and throughout this week, go with the knowledge that we are a community. We are in communion and fellowship through liturgy, with, through friendship, through location. We are in fellowship with one another. Be fellowship, be communion for someone else this week and go in peace. And the people of God said, Amen.